How do you even market an unapologetic self-harm comedy during the deadliest pando in history? Here's my review of the extremely dark comedy on the count of three. Comedian Gerard Carmichael makes his feature film directorial debut and co-stars with Christopher Abbott. This film is centered around two childhood best friends who are so stricken with depression that they coordinate a plan to put each other out of their misery. But first, they spend the entire day tidying up loose ends. Kevin plays Al, who's been depressed all his life. He's a victim of essay and childhood bullying. Neither therapy, stints in mental institutions, or being heavily medicated have healed him from his deep depression. And all he's ever really had is his best friend Val, played by Gerard. Val, on the other hand, is living a mundane life and feels like life's no longer worth living. He complains that he's in the way and serves no meaningful purpose. So he busts his best friend Kevin out of the inpatient mental institution where he's been held and convinces him that the only reasonable solution to remove the pain is to shoot each other on the count of three. Sounds like a very depressing story, I know, and watching it makes you feel very uncomfortable. That's the point. Are we missing the signs because we're so distracted with all the arbitrary things that we become inundated with everyday life. This story doesn't get preachy or try to convince the audience that these two characters should be stopped. It's unapologetic in that way. The system failed these specific characters and the message is they are beyond medication and therapy at this point. It's not exactly selling suicide, of course it's not. It's showing the audience that these specific characters are mentally unstable and again that the system failed them in a way. Again, this story is unapologetic about self-harm in a way that you really don't see on screen. It doesn't inundate you with excuses why they should value their life and doesn't go out of its way to convince the audience that these characters' motives are justifiable it sort of releases responsibility. The supporting cast is exceptional in this film. Despite having minimal scenes, their arcs are pivotal. Usually someone in the supporting cast is critical in being the conscience of the protagonist, and in this case, the dual protagonist, but not here. There's no buddy their best friends but there's no outside buddy or even love interests saying oh no don't do it your life is valuable nobody's there to save these two you had henry winkler lavelle crawford jb smooth tiffany haddish they're all brilliant and what i loved about their arcs is that they don't they're there to shift the awkwardness and the discomfort because this is a very heavy subject matter they're there to shift the heaviness without 
contributing to the ultimate decision to end their lives, to end the characters' lives, Kevin and Val. Lavelle plays their longtime friend and owner of a motocross track, which Val and Kevin use to ride dirt bikes and blow off steam before they ultimately do the thing. JB Smooth plays Val's dad, who abandoned him as a kid and stole $2,300 from him when uh, JB Smooth's character was addicted to drugs. And even though his dad is in recovery, Val doesn't care. He's unforgiving. What his dad did significantly contributed to his depression. So he's very unforgiving, even though his dad has turned his life around. Val wants no parts. He doesn't care if his dad lives or dies. He just wants his $2,300 returned so he can give it to his girlfriend or ex-girlfriend who happens to be pregnant. Tiffany Haddish plays Val's pregnant ex-girlfriend. And though we hear her voice in a couple of scenes and, and through voicemail, she's only in one physical scene and she shuts it down. It's so powerful. It's the best scene in the entire film. Henry Winkler plays Kevin's former doctor who assaulted him when he was a young boy. Kevin goes to his office with every intention of killing him, but he's not at work. So he has to spend the entire day waiting for him to arrive so that he can shoot him. That's the overall story. There is a twist in the end, but that's the basic premise. Now I have a few issues. Marketing. Who's this film for? Who would enjoy a film like this other than cinephiles maybe? So far it's made <laughs> $55,000 at the box office because it is impossible to promote a film with such a terminal theme. The other issue I had was with Gerard the actor. His eyes wander in a few scenes like he's studying camera angles and he did direct this, this film. He directs and stars in this film and there are times you can see his focus drifting out of the scene but his comedic timing and line delivery are intellectually sound it's not ha 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 funny it's just intellectually comedic this movie is not for everybody and difficult to recommend and the time of this release isn't the greatest. I mean, we're just coming out of the deadliest pandemic in history. So I just don't know who wants to see something like this. But if you decide to stream this, it's available on demand. Be warned, it's very heavy and unapologetic. On a grading scale, I give on the count of three, a C. Thank you so much if you stuck around this long. Certainly appreciate you. Please consider liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. And until next time, peace.